Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX. Thanks for joining me today. And TID Radio have sent me their brand new second generation of the TID Radio TDH8 for me to have a look at. This is the ham edition. We'll get more into that a little later on. But what you need to know now is it's a dual band FM handheld boasting 10 watts of output power and a pretty loud speaker as well. Uh, and not forgetting that this radio also has Bluetooth on board for programming using the OD Master app available on either iPhone or Android. So let's have a quick look at what you get in the box. Obviously, I've already unboxed the radio, but in the box with the radio, you get this uh, lovely lanyard, which I've already attached and of course the uh, antenna uh, we also get if we open up the box a uh, let's see if we can do this in a somewhat of a right order a, an instruction manual which i have to say is uh, in pretty good english for uh, one of these uh, chinese manufacturers uh, nice and legible easily walks you through what you need to be doing with the radio uh, we also find a helpful little sort of customer support card, uh, which is uh, really quite nice. Gives a couple of contact details either on Facebook or, or WhatsApp. And on the reverse also reminds you to download the user manual. Uh, you can also download their own programming software and a product operation video available at walkietalkiesoftware.com. I wonder how much they paid for that URL. Uh, also in the box we find a, a USB-A to Type-C cable, which uh, is nice to see uh, because the radio charges with USB-C. Uh, we find a, a desktop charger, which has uh, that USB-C port on the back, which I'm not quite sure whether you can see through the plastic. I've not, uh, um, not unboxed it. I don't know if I hold it on there. Yeah, you can see it on that one. Um, but uh, yeah, USB-C, nice to see. And uh, this bit worries me. It's a, uh, a three pin uh, adapter, five volt USB-A on the bottom, but it has no weight to it whatsoever. So I suspect that's a little capacity dropper, um, which can be a bit blow uppy. Uh, personally, if you buy one of these radios, uh, I would recommend not using the supplied three pin adapter. You can see I haven't. Um, I have left that in the box because I think that that is, it's, uh, it sounds very hollow um, and I'm not sure I'd trust it plugging it into my own house electrics. I'm gonna put all of that back in the box and let's focus on the radio. So let's have a quick uh, walk around the radio and we'll start off on the top where we find a SMA mail connector. Uh, which is the same that you might find on things like Balfangs uh, or on the uh, Yaesu FT4, for instance, that has the same connector. Uh, it's the opposite of what we might see on some of the higher end radios, things like uh, the uh, even the FT60, for instance, has got a, an SMA female on it, but FT5s, ID52s, uh, newer Wuxon radios also sport the SMA female on the radio. So it's just worth noting, it's the opposite way round to what you might expect. Uh, there's also an orange programmable button on this top. Uh, there's an LED flashlight or torch, uh, which is okay. It's nice that it's got one. It's not the brightest thing in the world and it's certainly not as bright as the torch I find on my phone, but gets the job done. Uh, there's a little LED status indicator here, which goes red when you're transmitting and green when you're receiving, uh, and also a rotary uh, on off and volume control. Nice to see that it's an actual pot by the looks of it, rather than it being a rotary encoder, um, because there's no animation on the screen. Companies, are, if they put a rotary encoder in, they tend to put a screen animation to say that what the volume number is. No such of any of that here. It's on, it clicks on, and then it's just whatever you said it, that's the volume. Nice to see. On the left hand side, we find a nice clicky PTT button. I'm quite fussy when it comes to PTT buttons. If it feels mushy, I'm not a fan this one. There's a bit of mush, but actually it clicks nicely. And then there's two more programmable buttons. Uh, flipping the radio over to the other side, we find under a nice rubber flap, a uh, standard for this type of radio, Kenwood style 
two pin speaker mic connector. Again, it's nothing that we've not seen before. And not only is that a speaker mic connector, but if you did want to program the radio using a programming cable, it uh, plugs in there. And it's the same programming cable as the Belfengs and the Wuxons of the world. So pretty generic. On the rear of the radio, we find a belt clip, which was separate in the box. Obviously, I have installed. And if we take the battery off, he says, it's quite a, quite a heavy duty clip that uh, we find that the battery itself is a two and a half thousand milliamp hour battery. Uh, so that should do a pretty good job. Of course, the radio, you have to bear in mind, is a 10 watt radio. So if you have it running at high power, possibly not going to last as long as other radios in high power mode. Uh, but I'd imagine you're probably going to get a day of use out of that as well. One other nice thing about the battery in particular is the fact that it also has a USB-C connector on the battery. Uh, so if you didn't want to use the uh, drop-in charger, and personally I'm not a fan of drop-in chargers, uh, I much prefer just to plug a cable into the radio and be done with it. So I can do that with this, I can just pop in a USB-C uh, cable and then over here it's got a charging indicator and uh, that's an easy and convenient way to recharge the the radio particularly if you're out and about maybe you've um, taken the radio on a trip or on a vacation or holiday and uh, you don't necessarily want to take the big charging base well, you don't have to you, your chances are your laptop or your mobile phone might already have a USB-C connector on it so you've already got a USB-C cable with you and when you finish charging your phone or your laptop, plug it into the radio and you can charge your radio at the same time or just after. Uh, let's pop the uh, antenna on. Now this supplied antenna, I have to say, is fine on the 70 centimeter band, uh, but in my testing, it's been a little bit poorer on two meters to what I might expect. Uh, so uh, I probably would not keep this antenna. I would probably replace it with something a bit longer. I'm thinking probably a signal stuff signal stick, for instance, would be quite nice. Um, or, I don't know, maybe a diamond uh, SRJ77, something like that would uh, be quite nice. Uh, I say, you just got to bear in mind that it's the reverse of what you might expect in terms of the antenna connector. So uh, if you already have some antennas lying about for a different radio, they may or may not work depending on what radio you have previously been using it with. Uh, most of my antennas, I have to say, are uh, SMA mail on the antenna because I'm using them with things like the ID52 or the FT5. Uh, so I have to use a little adapter in order to use it with the TID radio. But that's perfectly fine. Those adapters are a little thing that's often gold plated. Uh, they're no more than a few pounds on the likes of eBay or similar. Uh, the radio itself is also a nice weight in the hand and it's not too big. It's it's It feels solidly built enough that if I dropped it on the floor, it's heaven forbid, it's not going to break. But it's also not too big and too cumbersome that I feel like I can't one hand operate it, which I totally can with this. And it is just the perfect thing for the throwing in a backpack. Uh, and not necessarily caring too much about because they're not too expensive. Certainly I'd put this thing through more of a beating than I would my Yaesu FT5 or my Icom ID52, for instance. Uh, let's turn the uh, radio on now and we can see that uh, we get this nice uh, full color screen. It's a two inch or four and a half centimeter diagonal display and it's pretty easy to see. Below it we find the nice loud speaker and a full DTMF between the VFO mode and the memory mode. Uh, the Bluetooth on and off button and then a switch to uh, go between the uh, top and bottom VFOs. They call it AB, it's not quite AB but never mind. And nice to know that the DTMF keypad here is backlit. However, the three buttons up the side of the speaker are not backlit, um, which once you've got to using the radio and you're pretty comfortable where the buttons are and you can do it sort of blind, that's not going to be a problem. However, I went out in uh, sort of uh, pretty low light conditions uh, a few uh, days ago and uh, found that I hadn't memorized where these buttons were and therefore I uh, I was pressing the wrong button. I was act activating the Bluetooth when I wanted to swap between the, the uh, top and bottom VFOs. So just worth noting that although the keypad itself is backlit, these buttons are not. And you might be pressing these buttons more often than those buttons. 
I don't know. Go back to uh, the screen. We can see everything we might want to at a moment's notice. Of course, we can see the current operating frequency along with uh, if we're in a VFO mode, we'd see uh, the channel name or channel number there. And we can also see that uh, what's on the sub VFO as well. Uh, we also see a few indicators around the display. So we can see the H, which means we're in high power mode. There's a W, which means that we're in the wideband FM mode. And across the top, we can see the sort of power indicator. Now, here's a little bit of a gripe I have with this radio is because that sort of uh, display across the top of the uh, meter, if you want, would have been nice to have made that a proper S meter for the receive as well. But alas, no, it's not. You've got this little icon uh, just in the very top left of the display, uh, which has a certain number of bars associated with it, either one, two or three, which is supposed to give you some indication as to how strong a signal is. Um, in my experience, even the weakest of signals have come up as three bars. So I think there may be a little bit of, um, yes, going on there. But it does show you how much power, how much power the radio thinks it's putting out um, on each of the various power levels. One thing I did find to be a little bit tricky with this radio was knowing which VFO was actually receiving a signal. If you're listening to two fairly busy frequencies then it can be a bit difficult the only way to tell is there is a tiny tiny little green indicator which comes on the uh, display and i'll try and just demo demonstrate that for you uh, by uh, transmitting you can see where the uh, green arrow comes because it's coming up on that top vfo that's not brilliant to be honest uh, but at least it's there but that could easily be missed so how have i found using the radio to be honest very nicely it's uh, a few things to bear in mind when you first get the radio uh, i found that with my unit the timeout timer was set for 60 seconds when i got it out the box um, and it wasn't until i was in a qso through a local repeater uh, with a local ham that i realized that i was hitting that 60 second limit quite often. Uh, and then when I pulled over, because I was driving at the time, when I pulled over, I had to dive into the menu in order to find the timeout timer to switch it off. Uh, I also found that the mic gain was a little bit low. Out of the box, they tend to set it for about mid range in the scale. Uh, I found that to be quite low, so I've turned it up all the way and certainly find that a lot nicer to listen to. I also found programming the radio using the app on my phone to be okay you can certainly do it and if you wanted to make a change on the fly without pressing lots of buttons on the radio then it's a nice easy method but if you're trying to do a lot of programming all in one go uh, then i'd certainly recommend going down the programming cable with chirp this radio fully supported by chirp uh, and that's a far far quicker way of putting lots of memories into the radio and as i say it's a standard programming cable that you might use with your bell thing that you already have or a wuxin radio or even a kenwood radio um, so getting a programming cable for one of these is not going to be difficult i have one i've got a, an old bell thing cable which uh, did the trick for me but i say the bluetooth uh, with the app did certainly work and i think i'm going to do a separate video on diving into the od master app uh, because I think it does more than just programming and I'd like to investigate that a bit further, but was keen to get this video out into the wild. Now I said at the very start that this is the ham version of the radio. And what I mean by that is because it's all down to software. The radio itself, whether you buy the GMRS or an unlocked version of this radio, the hardware is exactly the same. It's only the firmware. And we know this because you can swap the radio on the fly between the different modes. So at the moment it's in the ham mode and I've already programmed some frequencies into it. Uh, if I did a couple of button presses while I turned it on, and you can find the details of how to do that online, uh, I could make it a GMR, GMRS radio or I could make it an unlocked radio. Um, it is worth bearing in mind that if you do change the radio configuration, you are gonna lose the memories that are built in. Uh, but there's no reason why they can't program it again. It's also worth pointing out that if you're watching this video in Europe, then the band allocation on the TDH8 is not the European band edges. Uh, this is 
definitely marketed or, or made for an American audience uh, because the band edges are the American spec. So this will transmit between 144 and 148 megahertz and also 420 to 450 megahertz. Just bear in mind that if you're relying on the radio to tell you where the band edges are, as we see from other radios, my, my old Yaesu FT60, for instance, knows the European band edges and won't let me transmit above 146 megahertz, this won't do that. It might be nice to the radio, if you're listening, to update firmware, and have a different version, of the firmware to support the European and the American band edges because they have more bandwidth than we do. So let's talk price. Now the version of the radio you've seen today is their pretty base model, uh, which as we've said, comes with a battery antenna and base charger. And that retails for 69.99 US dollars. Uh, it comes in a variety of colors, either black, green, or crystal which is quite nice it's a see-through color i've seen that a few people have that on youtube uh, there is also a sort of more expensive option uh, which is 20 dollars more so it's 89.99 and that comes with a longer antenna which looks to be a rebadged nagoya uh, as well as a speaker mic as well so an extra 20 dollars you can have uh, a longer antenna and a speaker mic as well uh, and uh, two batteries actually, it comes with a couple of batteries too, so you can have one charging while using the radio and then swap them over. Uh, up to you, to be honest, for $20 more, that's not a bad deal to get an extra battery, uh, a longer antenna and uh, the speaker mic, but it's entirely up to you. The base version of the radio, of course, the radio itself is exactly the same. And while we're talking price, if you use the affiliate link in the description below and then use the coupon code M0JSX, so my call sign, at checkout, you will save 15% off your order. So there we have it. What are your thoughts on the TID Radio TDH8? I'd be really interested to know. Have you already got one? And what's your experience been? Or are you looking to buy one maybe and uh, add it to your collection of radios for sort of $70? Like it's, not, uh, it's not too bad, is it really? That's uh, quite a good deal. If you'd like to support the channel and support me financially, you can do so. You can either sign up as a YouTube channel member or sign up over on Patreon. Uh, I thank you very much, Advance, if you do choose to. There's also a PayPal link down below if you just want to uh, buy me a coffee. Uh, I'd very much appreciate that too. If you like this video, there's a button specifically for that. There's another button that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button. It really does help me out. There's another video just coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you might like next. And until the next time, 73. Bye bye.